Good morning all. I greet you all in Jesus' precious name. It's a wonderful privilege to be able to share God's word with you again today. I thank you for the opportunity and I pray that our hearts would be open as we just look into the scriptures and hear what the Lord has to say to us. I wonder if we could just bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Father, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for your love and your care for us. Thank you for keeping us during this time and affording us this opportunity this morning to be able to hear from your precious word, from your precious Son, the Lord Jesus. And so God, we open our hearts to you and we would ask for your blessing and your anointing upon your word. And Lord, find within us, I pray, a soft heart and a receptive heart to be able to receive and apply that counsel and that wisdom which you would give to us today in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Folks, there's no doubt that we find ourselves in a situation, in fact the whole world is in a situation here in South Africa. It's been about 50 plus nowadays of, of lockdown. And as time has dragged on, one starts to see how that people are really demanding answers and wanting to know what is happening and, and what is going to happen. What does the, the future hold for us? What lies ahead? And the whole world is in that, in that situation. It's, I just feel it's important for us to realize that where we are in, in world history and, and as far as biblical events are concerned, as far as God's timetable is concerned, it's important for us to realize that it's actually God himself who has brought us to this place. Um, it's he who has brought the world in its entirety to a standstill I really believe with all my heart to get our attention um, that we may hear him and heed his warnings because time is very very short uh, Jesus is coming soon the judge is standing at the door the scripture says um, it won't be long and time will be no more and there will be no more opportunity to be saved as it was in Noah's day the day came where God closed the door in fact there is a day which is soon to dawn upon us where God in fact is going to close the door of opportunity and so it is so important that we really hear his counsel uh, I'm amazed as one listens to the radio and, and reads the news and so on. It, it's amazing how that we have become so caught up in the situation. And there's not a single radio station that you tune into. And whether you listen in the morning or the afternoon or the evening, everybody, all day, every day, is just talking about one thing and it's this coronavirus that has has gripped the world and folk it just amazes me how that we somehow have have locked our attention upon the thing that God is using to to get our attention rather than hearing him and hearing his voice 
And I do pray, especially us as children of the Lord, while what the world faces is very clearly a very serious situation, but that we will not become caught up and distracted by uh, everything that is happening every minute of every day in the world and getting involved in all sorts of questions and and wondering uh, what lies ahead and what's the next step um, it, it, it's quite funny when when you hear the announcements made that we're moving to level three uh, the immediate question that comes into our heart is, well, when are we going to level two? Uh, what's the next step? We, we, we demand answers. We want to know. Uh, I know certainly for my own boys, they, they've just got one question in their mind. Uh, when can we go back to the beach? Uh, that's all they're concerned about. But again, it's, it's, it's just answers. We want answers. And folk, I pray, let's not become too caught up with with those things but rather understand god has arrested us god has brought us to a standstill that we may hear him and listen to his voice the burden of my heart to share with us today is is just simply like this in the form of a question is where are you getting your counsel from where are you getting your counsel from? Um, yes, we hear every day the, the leaders of this world and the wise men of this world giving their instruction and giving their advice. Um, but focus as children of the Lord while we thank God for the leaders that he has given us because he sets them up. And it is he who can, can take them down to. Uh, that scripture comes from the book of Daniel chapter 2. And in that very same portion of scripture, the Bible also says that it is God who changes the times. And folk, we've got to, I think, realize that it's God who has brought us to this time. It is God who has come to a place in in his calendar and has put a pin and, and, and said this is the time I am going to change the whole world I'm going to bring the whole world to a pause uh, that they may hear my counsel and hear my instruction and heed my warning to them there's a verse in the book of Proverbs chapter 19 in verse 27, the Lord says this, Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causes you to err from my word. Cease, my son. Stop listening to the counsels and the instructions of the world that will cause you to err from my word. Folk, it is so vitally important while we have this opportunity that we hear the word of the Lord. The Lord says this in verse 20 of that same chapter in Proverbs. Hear counsel and receive instruction from me that you may be wise in your latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. That's so true, isn't it? It's amazing how human nature, we, we, we love to hear the kind of counsel that suits us. And we latch onto uh, the type of instruction that will please us and that, that will be right for our lifestyle and the way we would like to, to do things. And so the Lord warns us and he says, there are many devices in the heart of a man. But nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, 
that shall stand. And folk, the, the, the counsel of God supersedes all counsel of man. And God will never ever say things just to please us. He will always speak the truth because he is truth. He is love. The Bible says he, he speaks the truth in love because it is his desire not to destroy us but to save us. God's Father heart towards us is to rescue his children from the sure doom that this world is going to face. And so folk, we would be wise people to hear God's counsel and to receive instruction from him that in these latter days, in this latter end, that we may be found to be wise people. God wants to expose what is in our hearts. He, he wants to expose the, the truth that we may come before him. The book of Psalms says that the, the Lord desires truth in the inward parts that we may come to him with all of our heart and turn to him with our whole heart. And folks, this is certainly what we need in these days because as we hear the counsels of men in this time in which we live, I think it doesn't take long for us to realize that man does not actually have the answer. That the wise men of this world uh, don't actually know what to do. Um, the the ec economic fallout and the devastation that this is still going to cause in the world. Folk, there are no answers. Man has no answers for those things. And it is so vital that we heed the counsel of God. But how does God instruct us? And, and how does He counsel us? How does He inform us of His ways? Well, the scripture says this in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, that in times past, God spoke to the fathers by the prophets. But in these days, he has spoken to us by his son, the Lord Jesus. And we know that the Lord Jesus speaks by his word. There is nothing more important to him than his word. And folks, in the same way, there is nothing more important to us as children of the Lord than the, the Holy Ghost anointed word of God. It is so critical and vital that we take our counsel and take our direction and that we believe the word of God and that we act upon the word of God. God's word, the Bible, is, is as a sure foundation. It is something solid. It is something concrete. It is something that we can depend upon with all of our heart. And so it is so vital that we believe the Word of God. Paul says this, because we may well ask the question, well, Lord, how do we then hear your Word? How do we practically receive this instruction? And Paul says that we have need that one teach us. We actually need a preacher. We actually need teachers, instructors, counselors to help us. And in this light, is it not such a joy and such a privilege for us folks 
to belong to the body of Christ and to know that we are surrounded by God's children and God's ministers whom he has anointed and filled their hearts with his word and they are able to instruct us and able to counsel us in the ways of the Lord. The Bible says that the body of Christ is not one member, but it is many members. In fact, that's such a vital fact and a vital truth for us to come to grips with. There are no uh, single heroes in God's economy. There are no individual preachers, as it were. Or, or, or singular men that God will raise up to say, well, this is my man for the hour. Um, listen to him because he has the answers. No, folk, there, there is no single man that has the answers. What we need is the, is the multiplicity of the body of Christ. And important to... To, to, to submit to uh, the fellowship and, and the body where, where God has placed us and to take heed to those instructors that God has placed and set as it's pleased Him. The book of 1 Corinthians 12 speaks about that. He has set us in the body as it has pleased Him and so important for us to uh, take heed and listen to uh, that multiplicity of counselors that God has given to us in the body where he has placed us. Uh, I always say it like this to my sons. Um, we, we are a family here and, and we have very wonderful neighbors who are good friends with us. And the dad and I get on very well and we, we think very much alike. Um, but you know, my boys uh, don't submit to him because he's not their dad. Um, as much as he is a, a great guy and, and a solid guy, God has, has placed my sons um, in this family and I am responsible for them and not my neighbor. And they are responsible to, to listen to me and to heed my instruction because I am their dad. And folk, in the same way, God in his wisdom has placed us in a body and in a fellowship where we can be cared for and loved and nurtured by those that he has put in, in oversight over us and it is so important that we uh, heed the counsel of those fathers and those elders and and leaders and counselors that God has put over us and and put us in their in their care in the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14 the Bible says this where there is no counsel, the people fall. The nation fails, some versions of the Bible say, where there is no counsel, where there is no wise leadership. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. There is safety in the multitude of counselors. Uh, folk, what is been such a challenge to my heart in, in just recent days and recent weeks is very simply this, that I as an individual do not have the right answers and I can never trust my individual understanding or my individual counsel 
um, I need to yield to those that God has put me into into fellowship with even if I was 100% in tune with God and 100% full of the Holy Ghost and uh, exactly where God wants me to be in, in, in a close relationship with Him. Even in that situation, the best I can be is just a part of the puzzle. Uh, I am just a portion. I am just one member of the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is not one member, but it is many members. The book of 1 Corinthians 12 teaches us. And folks, we need each other. We, we cannot trust our own counsel. We need the counsel of the members of the body where God has placed us. Uh, the foot needs the hand. The eye needs the ear. It doesn't matter who we are, how strong or how weak we are. We absolutely need each other as the body of Christ. I'd like to just share a, a scripture with us. It's just an, a, a, a beautiful account in the Old Testament in the book of Daniel which just highlighted this point so so wonderfully to me. I've just been so excited reading through the book of Daniel again. And in chapter 1 of Daniel, the, the, the scripture begins um, speaking of how that uh, Judah was taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar. And the, the reason was is because the king who reigned at the time, Jehoiakim, was a very evil king, a very wicked king. But what brought him into difficulty and caused the nation to be taken captive was the fact that Jehoiakim refused to listen to the counsel of the Lord. In fact, it was Jeremiah who, who wrote on a scroll um, the word of the Lord and, and gave very clear warning to Jehoiakim of things to come. And yet the, he absolutely refused. In fact, the Bible speaks of how that he took his pen off in, in Jeremiah 36 and he tore up, he cut up that scroll that, that Jeremiah had written and he threw it in the fire. That's what he thought of the counsel of the Lord. He, he was so wise in his own eyes and, and thought that he had all the answers and, and, and thought that he was above God. And folks, for that reason, God brought the whole nation into captivity. And if you think things are bad in lockdown, uh, just for some 50 plus days, uh, this was the end. This was absolute lockdown and, and captivity with no end in sight, with, with no hope in sight. They were, were prisoners um, to, to Nebuchadnezzar, this Babylonian king. But you know, in the second year of, of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, the Bible speaks of how that he had some terrifying dreams and he they, they, they really really disturbed him and what disturbed him the most is that he couldn't remember what the dreams were and had absolutely no idea what they meant and amongst his captives there were four young men and their names were Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Michelle. Uh, you may recognize the, the other three by their Babylonian names because he changed their names to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But these were four men who really had their hearts set upon God. The Spirit of God was upon them. The Bible says that God gave them wisdom 
and knowledge above all of their, their fellows, above all the other wise men that were in Babylon at the time. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar says, the Bible says, he found them to be ten times wiser than, than those around them. And it's just amazing how God blessed these four young men. Anyway, the time came that Nebuchadnezzar had these dreams and he called in all his magicians and his astrologers and his sorcerers and the Chaldeans. And you know, folks, these, these men were, were men of great renown. They were men of great wisdom, men of great knowledge, um, well-versed in history and science and mathematics and, in fact, in, in, in tune with the spiritual realm and the, and the spiritual world. And so Nebuchadnezzar calls them in and says, I've had these dreams, I need you to tell me what they mean. And so they said, well, King, if you just tell us what you dreamt we will be able to give you the answer and he said no well it doesn't work like that because I've forgotten the dream so I need you to tell me what the dream is and what it means and of course they were greatly disturbed by this and said Nebuchadnezzar it's impossible and um, there's not a man on earth that is able to do this uh, only the gods are able to do that and this made Nebuchadnezzar so furious because he said you are the ones who are supposed to be in tune with the gods uh, you are supposed to have this understanding and he said to them that if you do not tell me what my dream is and what it means I'm going to cut every one of you in pieces and I'm going to make your houses a dunghill so there was tremendous fear that, that, that came upon. And, and in fact, Nebuchadnezzar, it was, it was a blanket decision. He says, every wise man in, in the whole country will be killed if you don't find the answer. And anyway, news got back to, to Daniel. And it's just wonderful when you read in, in the scriptures when, when the men came to uh, now take them and destroy them. Arioch was the king's soldier who was set to this task to destroy all the wise men. And when Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, came to, to Daniel, um, the Bible says here that Daniel answered him with counsel and with wisdom. Isn't that beautiful? And Daniel said, why is the king's commandment so urgent? Why is there this, this rush? He said, tell the king that, that we will look to God and we will bring him the interpretation that he is looking for. And anyway, as, as events unfold, in fact, just before Daniel went before the king, um, having made that commitment to Arioch, Dave, uh, Daniel went straight back to his, his four friends, uh, Hananiah, Ezariah, and Michelle. And he said, guys, we need to pray. We need to seek God because the king needs this answer. And folk, again, it just so blessed me uh, with that scripture there in Proverbs 11, in, in the multitude of counselors, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Daniel was not just one man. He wasn't, he wasn't the superhero of the hour. In fact, it was the four of them together who sought the Lord. And would you, would you read carefully in the scriptures, um, in, in Daniel chapter 2, verse 17, it says there that it was they, that they desired mercies of the Lord and um, they did it together and later on in verse 23 when when God actually gave uh, the answer 
uh, Daniel says, Lord, they, they, they gave God glory and they worship the Lord. He says, because Lord, you have now made known unto us the king's matter. Folk, it's just touched my heart, this, this multiplicity of counselors that is so important for us. Uh, they, we, we cannot listen to a single man. There's not one man who has the answer. We need to listen to the, the, the multiplicity of counselors that God has given us. Anyway, Daniel goes before the king and uh, he says, King, before we go any further, I just want to just clarify that none of your sorcerers or magicians or the Chaldeans were able to interpret this dream. But he says, I want you to know in verse 28 of Daniel chapter 2 that there is a God in heaven. And folk, I hope that's what we will understand in this day and age in which we live. Instead of listening to what the world is saying and the world's counsel, can you and I understand today that there is a God in heaven? There's a God in heaven who is speaking to us. And he is speaking to us through, through his counselors in, in, the, in the body and in the place where he has set us as it pleases him. When Daniel begins to now un, un, unfold the dream, before he does that, he, he says to Nebuchadnezzar, he says, King, there's actually three parts to this, to this message that God is wanting to, to say to you. And in verse 29, he says, the first part of the message, King, is for you. It's for thee. He says, as for thee, O King, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed of things that should come to pass hereafter. So God was in fact warning Nebuchadnezzar. God was uh, giving him a warning of things to come. That was the message to Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel in verse 30 uh, also says there was actually a message in this for me too. He says, as for me, God was showing me that this thing was not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have. So in fact, God was making it very clear to Daniel that he was not the man of the hour. In fact, it had nothing to do with him whatsoever. And then the third part, he says, halfway through verse 30, he says there, and for their sakes, uh, in the original it says, and for our sakes, speaking of Daniel and his three friends, for our sakes who shall make known the interpretation that you, O king, might know the thoughts of your heart. In fact, that's actually the, the, the ultimate thing, I believe, of, of what God wants to do through the multitude of counselors. And it was through these four men, as God revealed the, the, the interpretation, and, and I'm not going to go into what took place thereafter, I'd like to just stop right here just to make this point, that as, as God revealed to these four men the interpretation, folk, it was through their counsel, through their counsel that God showed what was in Nebuchadnezzar's heart. And it's amazing how that works the same for us, isn't it? Through the counsels of the body of Christ, God reveals what is in our heart. I think of the time when the Lord was taking the children of Israel through the wilderness. And the Bible says that he, he caused them to hunger 
and he allowed them to suffer that he may prove what was in their heart, whether they would obey him or not. And folk, I'll just leave us with that challenge today. What will you do and what will I do with the counsel that God gives me and gives us through the multitude uh, of counselors that he has set over us? The Bible says this, in, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, it, the Bible speaks about submitting one to another in the fear of the Lord. The Bible speaks about being clothed with humility. Go and read this scripture for yourself. I'll just turn there in closing. Romans chapter 12 in verse 10, the Bible says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Folk, I'd like to leave that with us today. We need to prefer the counsel of the body of Christ far more than my own wisdom and my own understanding of things. Let's submit to one another. Amen. Let's submit to the counsel that God gives to us. Let's hear his word. Let's hear his voice, particularly in these closing days of time. Father, we bless you and thank you again for your word. Thank you so much for this time. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would just settle these things in our hearts um, Help us, Lord, to, to hear your counsel, um, not through one man, certainly not through anything that the world is saying to us, but Lord, let us hear your counsel through the body, the, the, the place where you have set us as it has pleased you, because Lord, it is there where we will hear your voice. Uh, Lord, we, we make a decision today to humble ourselves and to submit one to another in the fear of the Lord. Uh, Lord, I make a decision to not heed to my own counsel and not heed to my own wisdom and my own understanding, but in honor to prefer those that you have put me in fellowship with, in honor preferring the counsel of the body, preferring one another rather than what I think is right. We ask these things in Jesus' wonderful and precious name. Amen.